the final session of the day, right? Yeah, welcome to the final session of the day. Uh, we have not one, not two, but three presenters for you. I'm Ian. I'm going to be kicking the session off. Then I'm going to be joined on stage by Raz, who's going to be taking over from me and talking about something else. And then finally, Danilo will come up and uh, do a quick demo for us. And the topic of this last section is uh, creating voice-enabled applications uh, with Alexa Ask. Now, the first question that a lot of people ask is, uh, what is an echo? Because obviously they're not physically available here in Israel or for that matter anywhere else on this side of the Atlantic at the moment. So let's try this. Alexa, what is Alexa? I'm Alexa, and this is an Amazon Echo. <laughs> Alexa, what is an Echo? Amazon Echo is a device designed around your voice that can provide information, music, news, weather, and more. Okay, so that answers the first question. Oh, skip that. How does it work? Okay, so obviously it's a connected device. If you were in the room a second ago, you'll have seen Danilo doing some magic to connect this device to a Wi-Fi network. So it's a connected device. Uh, inside the device, there is actually some pretty sophisticated technology. So there's a, a Wacom activity microphone there. The device is in a passive mode until you say that keyword, which you'll have heard me say, Alexa. I think that's actually configurable now. Inside the device, you have uh, seven of these far field microphones. They do a couple of things. First of all, they activate the device when I say the wake word. But secondly, what they do is they're, uh, they're directional in nature. So if you're in a very noisy environment, ideally and theoretically, you should still be able to use the device. When you make that first comment, then that will switch the mics into directional mode. And you can normally use the device even in these environments where you've got quite a lot of background no noise. Uh, so if you want to ask a question or do something, all you have to do is speak to the device. And there's actually a lot of functionality built in there already. You can use it to control uh, music. You can integrate it with third-party music services like TuneIn Radio, for example, or Spotify, I think, is integrated now as well. You can play music that you might have in your Amazon.com music library. You can also uh, use it to access web-based information sources. This is one of my favorite scientific questions. Alexa, how big is the Earth? Earth, depth, 3,960 miles. Circumference, 24,900 miles. Diameter, 7,900 miles. Alexa, stop. So you can access public information sources like that. That data, by the way, comes from things like Wikipedia and Wolfram Alpha and other information sources that are semantic in nature. So that's pretty cool. Well, that's all uh, built-in functionality that's there in the device when you unpack it and configure it. But that's not what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about how you can make this device a little bit smarter uh, beyond these basic functions that are built into the platform. And the way you do this is by using skills, okay? And uh, skills can be developed by individual developers. They can be hooked up to specific Amazon Alexa accounts for testing purposes or for sharing with your friends. But there are also quite a few skills now, over 500 in fact, that are available from third parties, either commercial organizations, nonprofits, or individual contributors that have contributed voice skills to what is effectively a voice apps marketplace where you can configure and activate new skills with the device. Uh, some of the ones that have recently launched, these are in the US, obviously you can call an, an Uber by saying, Alexa, call me an Uber. It will link to your Uber account, take one pre-configured address that you might have set up and send you a car. And you can also order pizza now. So you can literally get pizza without even having to get off your couch to get your phone to get a pizza. This could have health implications, I think. On the uh, more sort of serious app side of things, there's also an integration with Capital One in the US. So you can say things like, Alexa, what is my current credit card balance? Or Alexa, what is my minimum payment? And it'll use private credentials that you've set up in your account together with Capital One's public API to read back to you details of your financial status, literally telling you how much balance you've got on your credit card and what your minimum payment is. So these are great examples of uh, third-party commercial organizations that have built these skills and integrated them via this voice platform. 
And the product itself is actually very popular. So we got 34,000 customer reviews when this uh, capture was taken. We've got an average review rating on Amazon.com of over 4.5, which is actually pretty unusual. Obviously, good sort of hard evidence. There's also some evidence that customers are emotionally attached to the device. Okay? This customer sent Jeff Bezos an email saying, I have modified my house by cutting a hole in one of my walls so that I can use Alexa from my kitchen and my lounge. <laughs> so he's got his kitchen on the far side, and then his lounge is on this side, and he's got the device centrally located in his house, which is, you know, I think uh, pretty strong evidence of fandom, maybe even fanaticism, really. Uh, we've also extended the platform a little bit. So this is the original device that I got on the stage for the demo, which is the original Echo. This is called a Tap. Uh, this is a portable battery-operated device which belongs to Raz down here. This one's a little bit different. It doesn't have the far field or the voice activation. You have to press a button to power it up, right? And the reason for that is uh, battery consumption. The far field microphones and constantly listening consumes quite a lot of energy. This is a portable device with a lithium ion in it. Most of the device is, bat is uh, speakers. So uh, it's pressed to activate in order to save the battery life. Then we've got integration with the Fire TV. So the Fire TV, as you probably know, already has voice search. You can press a button on the Fire TV to activate voice search. Just say, in the case of my house, Peppa Pig, and your four-year-old daughter will be served with you know, unrestricted amounts of cartoons, basically without having to be able to type. And this is, a ta uh, this is a dot, which is similar to this in functionality, mains power, much smaller form factor, much less speaker power, so obviously it's not as good for standalone music applications, but on the back of it is a 3.5 millimeter jack, so you can plug that into a regular audio system and power actually a much larger uh, hi-fi system from the device with digital quality audio that's streamed to it if you want to do that. This is also very good for demos in this kind of setting. We don't have one today, but if you are doing technology demos or you want to use Alexa in an auditorium, you can plug the uh, microphone into like a PA system, the, the speakers into a PA system, which is also pretty cool. So that's a little bit about the product. What about the ecosystem? So basically there are a few different components of the system, some of which we operate and some of which are pluggable. Okay? So the core of the system is this Amazon Alexa automated speech recognition and natural language understanding system that we've built. So this is how you interpret the audio that is coming to the system, determine what the intent is from that audio, and then trigger these developed or third-party skills that you're going to be using together with the service. And then on the front of that, uh, the voice service. So what's really happening is the device is capturing an audio file. It's shipping it as an audio file to an API endpoint, which represents the in entry point into this Alexa core. And then that on the far end is triggering another API call to whatever the skill is that has been detected by that assessment of what the intent is of the phrase that's been spoken. Okay, so you've got the audio stream, ASR and NLU, and then on the far end of that, your service, if that's detected as an intent, is what actually processes the service. And Danilo will show this, I'm sure, but the services themselves are implemented as Lambda functions. They receive data structures encoded as JSON objects, which contain information about what's been interpreted. And that's how you actually build your programmatic logic to execute whatever actions you want, whether that's returning some speech or performing some, uh, some third-party action on some other party's API. And then you can communicate back with the device through passing back a textual or audio response, which is then either spoken or played back through the device, or you can pass back a graphical response. And this would be triggered on the Alexa companion app, which runs on an iOS or Android device. Okay, so that's how the flow looks. And in terms of constructing these experiences, basically what we recommend is an iterative model for development of these skills. So creating an MVP, as you might do for any other software product or service that you're building, which will have core functionality. Then extending that with additional capabilities of, or features. And then lastly, continuing to build that out into a more fully featured uh, set of capabilities. So if you were taking an example, which might be traffic, a simple traffic skill might be you know, a raw estimate of how long it would take me to get to work on uncongested roads. Alexa, what's my travel time to the office? Integrating that with a little bit more functionality and a little bit more richness and a little bit more depth, you might start to bring in third-party data sources about traffic congestion, 
rerouting that might be required, building this from public APIs, maybe establishing partnerships for that with other data providers. And then lastly, uh, you might build additional enhancements that are more responsive in nature. So I want to get to the office, and the response could that to, could that to be could be, you know, your shortest route is blocked. Try this alternative routing, and you again taking data and reading it back to the user in the form of audio. Okay. So we provide a framework to help you get started. Voice experience de design. You can find all of this on the Alexa developer portal. So helping you move through the process with some uh, best practices and guides for designing your experience for development. We would then review at that point, and then finally you're certifying that, and you place it in that voice skills marketplace. And at this point, I'm going to hand over to Raz. He's going to talk a little bit more about an investment initiative that we have to help people build these kind of apps. Thank you. Raz Bachar. I'm the director of the startup in Europe, in the and Africa. כל מה שקשור לאלקסה יש לה אינטגרציה מאוד מאוד צמודה ל-AWS וסטארט-אפים שעובדים בתוך האקו סיסטם הזה. כחלק מהתמיכה והרצון שלנו לבוא ולהאיץ את האימוץ של המוצר, יש לנו קרן ייעודית שפתחנו להשקעות בצד הזה של, בטכנולוגיה הזאת של אלקסה. אז מה זה אלקסה פאנד? זה קרן של מעל 100 מיליון דולר. המטרה העיקרית שאנחנו רוצים לבוא ולעשות עם הקרן הזאת זה להשקיע בסטארט-אפים שאחד עוזרים לבוא ולפתח סקילס, מה שאיין דיבר מקודם, כלומר חברות שיש להן פתרון קיים היום שרוצים לייצר את הגרסה שלו של אלקסה והדבר השני זה טכנולוגיות שקיימות היום אולי בעולם ה-IoT ויותר ה-Devices שרוצים לייצר אינטגרציה ובעצם להטמיע את אלקסה בתוך ה... בתוך המוצר שלהם. אז אה, המטרה היא באמת לבוא ולהרחיב את האקוסיסטם הזה ולראות, זה בסופו של דבר פלטפורמה שנועדה לבוא ולהיות אה, מותקנת בכל אה, מיני דיווייסים. אה, דוגמה נוספת לזה שיש לנו זה דברים כמו למשל פורד שעכשיו אה, לוקחים את אלקסה ומטמיעים אותם בתוך הסמארט קארס שלהם לדוגמה. אתם יכולים לראות פה חלק מהוורטיקלים ואיפה שהם משחקים, אז מן הסתם הרבה מאוד סטארט-אפים בעולם של ה-Connected House והדברים שאורן הראה בהרצאה הקודמת. כל מה שקשור ל-Communication, Connected Cars, מה שהזכרתי מקודם, בנוסף לכל הדברים האלה, גם מה שקשור לטכנולוגיה שמאחורה, כלומר, Natural Language Processing ו-Machine Learning, אם יש לכם סטארט-אפים ש... משחקים בתחום הזה, זה משהו שבהחלט נשמח לבוא ולשמוע עליו יותר. מעבר לכסף שמקבלים, יש עוד מספר דברים שאפשר לבוא ולייצר מזה, אז מן הסתם דיברנו על ה-equity ועל ה-investment, בנוסף לזה יש גישה ראשונית לכל הטכנולוגיות וכל הדברים שאנחנו הולכים לבוא ולפתח ביחד עם אלקסה. הדברים הנוספים שיש זה מן הסתם אה, לבוא ולייצר את האינטגרציה הזו ולמפות את זה בתוך, אה, בתוך אמזון, אמזון דוט קום, שתי תוכניות לדוגמה שיש לנו, אז אה, זו תוכנית שנקראת לאנצ'פד, אה, תוכנית שבה אם יש לכם איזשהו מוצר אה, פיזי זה, אה, אתם יכולים לבוא ולהשתמש באמזון כפלטפורמה אה, כדי לבוא ולמכור את, ה, את המוצר הזה, במיוחד בצד של הגאדג'טים, פרויקטי קיקסטארטר למיניהם וכדומה. ואז הדבר האחרון, גם כל מה שקשור לצד של AWS, כחלק מהחליט של ה-AWS Activate, מי שמקבל את ההשקעה מה-Alexa Fund, מקבל גם קרדיטים נפרדים כדי לבוא ולהשתמש ב-AWS ובשירותי הענן של אמזון, כדי להשתמש בזה כתשתית. לפני שאני אעביר את הרשות לדנילו, שיעלה עכשיו, it will go up, I will try to see if this one will work, I will use the tap. Tough guy, tell me a joke. Why is six afraid of seven? Because seven eight nine. Thank you. I was Raz. If anybody has any question, I'm Raz at Amazon.com. Feel free to send me any follow-up question if you have. Over to the demo. Uh, let's try to create together a, a skill, to add a new skill to, to Alexa. 
uh, let's do something simple, but uh, we will still see. We already see. We will already see how to use uh, sessions to store local data during an interaction with a with a skill. So, to create a, a, a lambda function, maybe some of you were in the other session. You go in the AWS console and you click on lambda. But then we will create a lambda function that will provide the backend functionality for the Alexa skill. You can also create a, a standard web service if you want. You are not, it's not mandatory to use AWS Lambda. Uh, but if you create a, a web service, you need HTTPS for security and you need to manage the availability and the scalability. Uh, with uh, Lambda, un until, unless you have more than one million uh, interaction per month, you don't have any cost. So I think it's a good choice. So let's go here. Let's create a new Lambda function. And we have a, a few blueprints. I already showed that you have blueprints for uh, Slack. We have blueprints for, other, uh, for integrating with other, uh, AWS Lambda with a lot of things. And we have blueprints for Alexa. So let's use the standard blueprint. We have the Python or the Node.js version. I didn't understand. Sorry, I, I said your name. Uh, I click here and let's go for uh, Python. And as, as you know, uh, uh, Lambda function can be connected, subscribed to an event. So for example, if a file is uploaded on S3, you trigger a Lambda function. In this case, we connect the Lambda function with the Alexa skill kit as the source of the event. This is an important step. Let's call it uh, Tel Aviv Alexa demo. Uh, as I said, this is the Python version. And as Ian said, you will receive an input, an event, and uh, this event, I make it a little bit bigger, this event will contain a session, an application, a lot of information that we will, the, the, the code is using to route the request uh, and build the answer in text format that you give back. So now I will uh, uh, create the, the function. I don't need a, a specific role. I, the basic role for a Lambda function is okay because I just need to log here. Uh, 128 megabyte and three seconds are enough for my function, so I will create the function now. And now I have to go on the Alexa developer portal to connect this uh, function to the skill that I want to create. So I click here, I go on the developer portal. Of course, I am logged out, sorry. And here we have the dashboard, but I already have, I think, the, 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 the skill here. So if you go, uh, on, this is uh, the list of the skills that I added. This is the color expert skill. The idea of this skill is that Alexa can ask me what is my uh, favorite color. I can tell her, and then in the session she will store this information, Sorry, I didn't understand my, uh, the, my uh, favorite color, and I can ask her, and she will remind me which is my favorite color. So if I click on the, on the, on the skill, I have the first screen is the skill uh, information and the invocation name that you see here is very important because these are the two words that will trigger the skill when I will uh, talk with Alexa. In this case, it's favorite color. Then you have the interaction model. So this is quite a broad topic, but the idea is that you have uh, a skill is decomposed in small interaction. Each interaction is an intent. So in this case, I have three intents. One is my color is intent, is the intent that I use to teach Alexa, which is my favorite color. Then I have the what is my color intent. I don't know what yours is, but the, mine is the phone. The, it's the intent that uh, she will use, uh, I cannot say her name, to tell me back which is the, the favorite color. And then a help intent that is usually a very good practice to have to give information how to interact with the, with the skill. And as you see, these are the, the name of the intent. And back here, we have the uh, utterances, that is how to uh, invoke the different intents. So for example, that uh, what, uh, what is my, uh, what's my color intent, that is the one that I use to ask the color, can be uh, reached with all these different permutations. And this is where you, have, you need to understand a little bit natural language to, to, to provide the, the good way of interacting. So what's my favorite color, get my color, give me my color, all this way will trigger the same intent. And the other intent, the one to 
teach to Alexa, which, which is my favorite color, uh, is, uh, is this. And then you can have categories. Uh, and you, uh, so in this case, I have a variable that is color. And I can put a, a list of, uh, of values. If I know that this is a category, it's a good practice. So she will, uh, it will be much easier for her to understand the colors if they are in the list. But it's not mandatory. So you can put a variable. And any word you say, it will be understood with the limits of uh, uh, natural language processing. And then some help. And if we go back on the code, uh, you will see in the code of the, uh, I think it's in the, it's here, oops. If we go back in the code, you will see that we have the same intent here in the, in the code. And you see the intent name is part of the event. And depending on the intent that I receive, I will call a different function in the, in the code. This is a sub-function of the lambda function. This is inside the code, just to give you an idea of how this works. So let's, uh, let's go on on the configuration. And this is the important step. You can choose between using an HTTPS endpoint or a lambda function. In this case, I want to use a lambda function. So I go back here. This is my function. I, Copy the ARN. IARN is the Amazon resource name, is the unique link to this function. Uh, I go here, here, sorry, and I replace this with the new function that I created. I save. And now I link the skill with the Lambda function. There are some text way to test a function if you want. Uh, and then the publishing information, like for any app store, you can publish and package it, so you need to provide some information more. But now the function is already here to be used. So I can switch to Alexa and say, Alexa, ask favorite color. Welcome to the Alexa Skills Kit sample. Please tell me your favorite color by saying, my favorite color is red. My favorite color is blue. I now know your favorite color is blue. You can ask me your favorite color by saying, what's my favorite color? Give me my color. Your favorite color is blue. Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> so, I, I, as you saw, I use sometimes a different wording, but the, uh, the, the, all the words were in the utterance. So this part is very important because you need to provide all the different ways to interact with the function. So that's what I wanted to show you. And uh, I hope you want to go home and create a new skill for Alexa. Thank you.